Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about how technology is helping solve coronavirus spread. Now, whatever I'm going to talk is not something new. These, techno these techniques have been used in multiple domains like cyber security and financial crime. Uh, but in this particular case of coronavirus, there are some countries like South Korea and Singapore have already tried this technique and it has been effective to some extent. Uh, not really solving the entire spread, but at least controlling the spread. So we are going to see the techniques, but before that, let us see like uh, we have been seeing uh, this particular visuals floating around called flattening the curve. Let's first understand the scenario, right? If you see the blue, uh, blue graph, right? The blue uh, curve over here. So what you are seeing is basically if you don't put any control, if you don't put any kind of scenarios like lockdown or uh, rapid testing or something like that, this is how the typical curve will be. So you will see a peak of coronavirus cases and over time it may flatten out. But the real challenge that we have today is we don't have that much hospital capacity to treat so many number of patients and we need to immediately flatten the curve. And that's where uh, like lockdown, uh, complete uh, isolation, self quarantine and all this comes into play. Now, this is not going to rapidly decline uh, the coronavirus cases, but it will delay the spread. So what I mean by delay the spread is you have the hospital capacity also in the mind and uh, basically the new cases will be delayed and so the hospital can accommodate new cases that's way that that way we can reduce the mortality rate right so that's that's how you take from the blue crowd to uh, yellow curve and it also gives you uh, amp it gives you ample time uh, to basically find out a vaccine or drug that can uh, cure coronavirus currently it's still under development that's another concerning thing so it's very important for uh, people to uh, when, when, when we say lockdown it's very important like non-essential jobs who can work from home uh, adhere to the rules because it's not that they are safeguarding themselves they are safeguarding others as well uh, so that, that's how basically you can stop the virus from spreading. Now said that let's go to the technology part of it, right? Uh, so basically how coronavirus spread? On a average, a person who is infected with coronavirus can infect around 2 to 2.5 person on average. So let's assume it's uh, 2 and this is be part of the World Health Organization reports. Right. So basically you have a person who is contradicting if he is interacting with another person uh, or uh, another person who is in close contact, uh, touches a surface which is infected, can get infected. That's 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 the scenario. Now, this is only one person. Right. But if you really see uh, the number of generation, it goes through. So the first person can infect two, the second person, each of this person can infect other two. And uh, if you see this is the first generation, second generation, third generation. And after 10 generation, a single person can infect around uh, 2051 per persons. Uh, so this is this is where the uh, this is where like isolation and lockdown comes into play. It really stops the spread. If we if we follow the right kind of scenario and right kind of rules that are set by the government, and right? now how, how technology is helping here, right? So there is a there is a pretty good use case in the banking space to combat financial crime. It's called common point of purchase or common point of compromise. So when we say if you have a credit card and two people complain of fraud. So what typically a banking scenario does, does they trace back uh, the credit card transaction and see like what are the common points where this card can be swiped uh, by the customer and that can be a merchant who is who is involved in a fraud. And the same thing uh, even uh, countries like South Korea and Singapore is using. So what they are doing is they go back and uh, they see the positive cases. Right. Let me go to the next slide where I have better wish. They, they go back and see the positive cases. So in this case, like there's a John and Joe who are like confirmed uh, positive. And uh, John went into Walmart, then he went into office. And then uh, before that, he has traveled in a flight from France to US. Right. And then Joe goes to Costco and AMC. He has also taken a flight. He, he has come from Dubai to France and to US. So basically what uh, the technology component over here is they go back and do backward tracking. That's the first phase. You find 
you first understand the common point of interaction between the positive cases there can be hundreds and thousands of positive cases you are trying to link back to find the common point where it can get uh, where a person could have got infected right so now in this case uh, maybe the high probability uh, when john was traveling from france to us or joe was traveling from france to us they might have uh, contradict they, they might have uh, got this virus uh, over here now uh, in the backward tracking basically you are just understanding the common point of intersection right now how are you doing this backward tracking uh, if the backward tracking is not easy you need a lot of data to correlate and this i am showing only a very simple instance maybe john got it after four three weeks or four weeks then you hospitalized you would have gone into multiple uh, such locations and visited such location so we need to kind of find out who are the other infected as well right so in the backward tracking how do you do is you use mobile activity you use payment activity if you have swiped a credit card you go and check where did you swipe a credit card where all did you use the payments so you know exactly as used in walmart so that is high possibility uh, people around in walmart at that time uh, may also be infected so that's why you go to mobile activity you see like what are the mobile signals uh, around that area right maybe in 6 feet or 12 feet ranges and you interview the person interview the family to understand where all he visited you see the travel history as well in this case both had travel from france to us so that's what you do in the backward tracking phase now once you are done with the backward tracking you need to also check or proactively who others can be infected right now john and joe are already confirmed cases how can we do that that's where we come up with something called forward tracking so forward tracking basically uh, if you if you see here like uh, there was a flight from france to us and how many other people did land in us at that time right so there were like in this case i have shown three for john and uh, similarly like uh, from dubai to france to us because from dubai to us somebody might have come at that time as well and maybe another two case in case of joe and in office how many any uh, close people did he come contact with uh, when he visited walmart how many people were close to him and similarly when he visited when he went for a movie in amc who was close by uh, joe and similarly in costco who others were there and after that it see this is a cascading effect right it's not only joe the person uh, who might have traveled with john might be uh, might be going to other uh, retail shops or maybe partying so he, he also has a possibility to uh, kind of uh, uh, kind of pass on the infections right pass on the virus rather so basically uh, you can see one of this guy went for a party and there were a few other people so that's what you do in forward tracking you are understanding who are the other people people who are possibly come in contact with the confirmed cases so that you can alert them you can inform them or you can send them for us and that is that's exactly what south korea did as well so they made they made sure and and we don't have unlimited uh, test scripts over here right uh, so we have limited test scripts we also want to make sure that we alert the confirmed cases so that we don't uh, spread the virus even more if we leave them few few people do not have symptoms also in this case and they may not realize it at least keep them informed that there is a possibility that you might have been infected with the virus because you traveled in the same flight or something like that so this is what singapore did and based on this data you are building a network graph a graph you are doing a graph analytics and this exactly was what singapore did you can see basically this taking for taken from the co.vid19.singapore website they basically tracked down the cases who are confirmed and then they went back and uh, see like how this person came in contact with the other person and they have built a very if you go to the website you can click and even see like how who all got impacted because of that particular uh, person right now this is like only the backward tracking but the forward tracking is also very important and that is very that is even though difficult to do it's important so that you can uh, you can go and uh, alert and make sure that the other person does not spread to others right so what what what, what do we what do the government need to do in this case finally right you do the backward tracking and then you have the list of confirmed cases so you build an application the application can be a simple rules based application or a statistical application it can be an you know, machine learning model if possible right we don't have lot of data and lot of trend to really say that it if possible or it can be a simple uh, distance based algorithm and categorize uh, the, those who have come in contact as low risk medium risk and high risk so based on uh, historical information where uh, similar such via similar such confirmed cases has happened and what you do is you do in the forward tracking you are you find out all the people who have come in contact 
and then keep them informed of possible transmission. That is one scenario where you see a low risk. Just tell them, okay, uh, you were in contact with a person who has confirmed. Uh, if you see any, if you see any abnormal uh, temperature or if you see any uh, kind of health uh, health behavior change, you just uh, come come and test yourself. The second one is you can uh, tell them, okay, you are at medium risk. So uh, just give us a call as soon as you see any symptoms or have, have proactively checked, right? And if they aren't high risk uh, based on uh, some statistical behavior, now all, all these features are coming for the statistical or the rules or something like that. Uh, it all depends on the behavior uh, or symptoms that the user with the confirmed cases has come with. That is something like maybe the hospitals have the data or the government have the data, right? So ask them to uh, get tested immediately. And also at the same time, you provide location-wise risk status. Uh, most of the time, like due to uh, privacy, uh, we don't know exactly which, uh, which places are impacted or who is impacted. The reporting it is done at a county level. So uh, it's very important to move at a granular level uh, within county, not not even streets, at least like sub streets or something like that, where I tell, okay, this particular area has high risk, this particular area has moderate risk of transmission, this has low risk of transmission. So at least people who are regularly going out for groceries and everything, they are they are very well informed of uh, uh, yeah, the the current status for that particular locality. Uh, the the reason it's very important, like people stay uh, in closed uh, isolation or self quarantine, so that the mandatory workers outside, like the healthcare professionals or people who are with a grocery stop or people who are maintaining the city hygiene, are able to operate without any fear or risk. So that's what. Um, uh, I was trying to talk in the video. It's more talking about like how technology can help accelerate uh, the accelerate detection of coronavirus spread, and it can also help in flattening the curve. Uh, because when you are doing a positive testing, you are making sure the other person is quarantined if he's if he's if he's in a positive scenario, right? So that's it. Uh, thank you very much.